Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... Do you have a hunting invention and don't know where to turn? With over 25 years of experience in the hunting industry, Greg Abbas has helped hundreds of inventors reach their dreams and can help you too. To find out more, visit our website or give us a call today. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and we've got a great show for you this week. I'm gonna make you feel like a kid again. We're gonna hit a muddy riverbank chasing after suckers, just the simplest kind of fishing you can do. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other fun in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. I was recently able to tag along on a youth pheasant hunt with our friends from SCI. You won't wanna miss that. It's all about getting new kids into the outdoors and chasing bird dogs. It was right up my alley. Then we're gonna stop in with John Eberhart. He's a famed outdoor writer here in the state of Michigan that primarily focuses on deer and we're going to be talking about what you can be doing this time of year to get ready for next deer season. Lots of good information there. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan. Makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling and smoking skills. More information at grillagrills.com By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Last week before the crazy weather hit here in Southeast Michigan, I met up with our friend Jim Felgenauer for some good old fashioned fun on the Bell River. Good morning, Jim. <laughs> good morning. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad. You know, the sun is shining and the fish are biting. <laughs> or it's raining and we're not sure. Or it's raining and we're not sure. We'll find out in a minute here. Yeah, so tell me what's going on. Well, this was another one of those kind of last minute plans here, you know, it's uh, we've got a great time of year. We're going to fish up here in Bell River for some suckers this morning. It's going to turn me into a little kid again. <laughs> you know, this is uh, this is how I started out when I was seven years old. So got a lot of good memories on this. Awesome. Yeah, All for right. sure. Pretty simple fishing. It's it's the simplest. We, uh, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I had that one fishing rod. It was a six and a half foot medium action rod. And that's all I needed for everything from bluegills to suckers to pike, and we're right back after it. You know, we're using kind of a perch rig and, and uh, very simple fishing. We're going to put a line in the water and just watch the tip of the rod, and we're going to catch some big fish. A couple of snelled hooks just above a little triangular sinker, and those are just put on there with line connectors. Just a, a basic perch rig is all that is. Huh. I use that triangular sinker because we're fishing sideways to the current. And I don't want that sinker to roll. So uh, I'm just going to put a, a small night crawler on here or a piece of night crawler. It does, you know, suckers aren't very line shy. They don't care. Yep, so there you go. That's, that's the whole rig right there. This is an opportunity here, always has been, to come out in the springtime and catch some really, really big fish. It's, it's simple methodology. It's cheap. A few night crawlers, a couple of hooks, and a sinker in your pocket, and you're ready to go. And we are just having a blast out here today. You just never should forget your roots. This is this is how you get kids 
started in fishing and keep them fishing. And we need to get kids out here to do, do more of this. We're in a great spot here. We're all by ourselves today. We have, we've had beautiful weather. It's, uh, it's uh, Thursday morning and you know we were kind of trying to find some kids to come with us today but of course everybody's in school like they should be. Maybe we should have done this last week during Easter break but, uh, but no, it's a great opportunity here. It's, it's not expensive you know if you don't have a lot to invest in a boat or something and, and you want to you see if the kids like fishing you don't want to invest in a lot of equipment you can bring them out here do something like this and you never know. They might have a great time and get hooked for life. So it's just uh, just a great opportunity and I have never outgrown this in almost 60 years of doing this. Jim was in his glory out here, but the sucker fishing was a lot slower than he expected in his favorite spot. So after waiting a while, he moved down to the corner where a little creek meets up with the river and before he had both lines in the water, he had one on. I call these poor man steelhead because they fight and they jump like crazy. And it's a lot like that because you're in a stream environment and because the fish get big like steelhead do. We get some crazy fish up here to about 30 inches, maybe 10, 12, 13, 14 pounders here. So uh, uh, a lot of shore fishing opportunities are for panfish and perch and bluegills and little things. This is fun because it's big fish. Nice big red horse. Oh, cool. I'm going to scoot you down here. I'm going to get a little muddy. <laughs> that's, that's all right. We're, <laughs> <laughs> We're fishing on that lower bank. That was a... Uh... All right. <laughs> Don't you lose him. Uh, I won't. Holy cow. There you go, kid. Nice job. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, look at this thing, huh? That's a nice red horse. Woo. Beautiful sucker right there. Look at the size of him. Wow. There we go. Easy peasy. Pretty nice fish, huh? <laughs> He's all muddy. Yeah, a little fun. That's what we're here for. Oh man, that's awesome. A little bit of fun, huh? Yeah. Throwing them back? Oh. Kiss the fish. <laughs> Throwing them back, ready? All right. There you go. I'm sure he's happy to go. Suckers, like most fish, spawn in the springtime. Uh, Bell River is a good spawning river. But almost any small river in the state is going to hold some fish. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of little parks around Michigan, county parks and roadside parks that are along a stream someplace, maybe the Cass River up along Saginaw Bay. And any of those rivers, the Flint River, they all hold suckers in the springtime. Some people do keep them and they basically just cut the head off and gut them out and then, and then smoke them. They're very delicious that way. One of my personal philosophies Another, another red is that with fishing, whether or not you release the fish yeah, may not make a big difference to you, but it makes a huge difference to that fish. So <laughs> uh, with suckers, it doesn't make a big difference to me. So I, I let it make a big difference to them. I give them their life and I let them swim, swim another day and maybe be caught by somebody else. I want to catch every fish, like that one right here. This one right here. This one right here. Yeah. Sweet. Another nice fish. I want to get every bite. God, just like a steelhead. Look at this guy. Look at him. Talk about a fight, man. <laughs> this guy thinks he's a steelhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Look at him go. You know, it took us a little while to find these things, but now that we're going other ride. Look at this other ride. Look at this other ride. We got a double header going here. Sorry, kid. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Southeast Michigan. <laughs> Got the spot to ourselves. Public park, great fish, tons of fun. You come do it. Ready? Yeah.
What a perfectly simple way to spend a spring morning. Special thanks to Jim Felgenauer for reminding us that in the hustle and bustle of this fast-paced world, sometimes all you need to feel like a kid again is to grab a rod and head to a muddy riverbank. Chasing after suckers is a great way to get back to your roots here in Michigan's Out of Doors. There are so many good sportsman's groups around the state that really go above and beyond in getting new kids into the out of doors. We're going to tag along with an SEI chapter that's doing just that and introducing kids to pheasant hunting for the very first time. With such a crazy spring weather-wise, when you get a sunny day and you can chase bird dogs, well, it doesn't get much better. Today I was joining the Michigan chapter of SCI to help introduce some new hunters to the world of wing shooting. Hey, we're having our second annual Michigan Safari Club International chapter um, youth hunt. Uh, it's a pheasant hunt. We've got three flights of kids ages 11 to 17. It's really designed to get them out of field enjoy the outdoors, the great state of Michigan, get them experienced handling guns. We're having good food and camaraderie here today. We're really for supporting hunting and our right to hunt, getting the youth involved to make sure we have future generations to follow in our footsteps. It's so important. Getting kids off the social media and getting them outside off the couch. There you go. Too low, too low. Right off the nose. What happened there, Scott? <laughs> uh, bird just got up and dropped down too low. And unfortunately, it wasn't a good shot. Um, the bird the bird and the dog didn't cooperate with us. Well, it was a good teaching time. That was yes. a good, not, you did a good job not shooting there, young fella. <laughs> we had three different flights of shooters today, and each flight had three groups of kids. So we had folks all over the grounds here at Pine Hill Kennels, just outside of Belding. A few kids had hunted before, but by and large, this was the first time many of these kids have been afield with a shotgun. So sit back and watch this dog work a bird just the way you would want him to. Got it. Take it. Nice. Hey. All right. Woo. All right. Nice shooting. Thank you. That was a good one. Thank you. Nice shot, young man. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Boy, the dog worked that one pretty perfect there. Oh yeah. It's all about teamwork and going out and having fun, and it's not about who shoots what, right? Yeah. You guys got three. Nice. Nice. Way to go, guys. That's have you been, awesome. Have you been bird hunting before? No, this is the first Never. time. What do you think? It's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of watching the dogs? It's interesting to see how they can catch the scent from so yeah. far away. Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You this had a good day. Is, that's one that he got right there. Oh, jeez. Look at that. That's a beauty. It's his first pheasant right there. Yep. First it pheasant. So it's a wonderful day. <laughs> so the first flight of shooters were done, and the next batch were up to bat. With all sorts of food back at the lodge, most groups just kind of hung around all day and told stories of the hunt. It was really a fun day to be out with these kids, many getting their first bird. Go ahead and shoot him. Gun in the air. Nice job. <laughs> nice job, buddy. <laughs> And it's a side-by-side. -side. That's what I shoot, buddy. Nice job, young man. Now, what I like about these events is that you can really walk a kid slowly through this process. Now, take a deep breath. Relax. 
I'm gonna put this, we're gonna, we're gonna put this bird up together, okay? I'm gonna have you take one big step forward, okay? All right. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah! <laughs> Stop right there, Blake, don't move. <laughs> Just keep your gun in a port of arms position for now. With such a controlled atmosphere, these kids get a chance to relax and learn as they go, which is why SCI does these kind of events. Boy, there's so many. Um, SCI, for, for one, is just a great organization. How do you not support an organization that supports hunting and getting youth and women and uh, everyone out in the outdoors? Um, I mean, this is our, our heritage. This is what we do. And the more we get involved with, with organizations like SCI, uh, boy, uh, we're in it. Yeah, it's for everybody. It's, we're, I don't want to say we're a dying breed, but if we don't keep up uh, supporting organizations like this, we're, we're going to disappear. Yeah. Well, days like today are really to help the sport and the lifestyle of hunting to remain alive and strong. But it really depends on the next generation getting involved. Hey! Holy yeah. moly, did I? <laughs> Boy, it. good thing he doesn't shoot like his dad. Well, it must be genetics from mom, I guess. I don't know. That's pretty good shooting. Two for two on his first time. Wow. Home. Well, we had a great day. The weather was perfect. The dogs ran well. The kids actually shot pretty darn good. And new families were exposed to a fun and safe day of hunting birds. Let's hope it was the first of many here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, hey everybody, we are here with John Eberhardt. Now, if you don't know who John is, you should if you're a deer hunter, but uh, John, just to kind of give a little bit of your background, you've been writing books about whitetail hunting, giving seminars for years. Just tell people kind of the, the, the brief version of how you got into this whole deer hunting thing. Well, I got into it when I was a young teenager. I walked by a shop in Ypsilanti and there was a guy in there shooting a bow and I was just impressed. And, I thought I was always thinking about whitetails. I had a lot of friends in school that whitetail hunted or with their parents and stuff. My parents didn't, okay. so I got into it and uh, just progressed. And uh, to date, I have 31 bucks in the Michigan record book. I've been bow hunting over 50 years, and uh, from 19 different properties. Now, when did you start writing and doing seminars and books and all that kind of stuff? Uh, started writing the books. First book was in 2003, hmm. and kind of did that because I was so. You know, the TV shows were really prevalent at the time and they were such a total misrepresentation of real hunting, yeah. blue collar hunting, you know, everything's micromanaged and, and uh, so I wanted to put some real information out there. So wrote the first one was called Boning Pressured Whitetails and to date it's been the number one selling boning book ever printed. Wow. And uh, then I did Precision Boning in 2005 and then Boning Whitetails, okay. the Eberhardt Way in 2010. Well, and so we figured for someone who wrote the book, literally on uh, on deer hunting and this time of year I don't necessarily think deer this this time of year here we are kind of end of winter beginning of spring or I guess technically it's spring but it doesn't feel like spring but so this time of year what is someone like you who's chasing deer year-round basically what, what are you doing this time of year uh, postseason scouting and location preparation and uh, statistically in, in all my books I have state-by-state -state stats you know PNY entries per licensed hunters bow hunter densities per square mile absolute square mile so I've got all the stats and it became very apparent to me even back in the mid 80s I knew this that most of the bucks 60 about 60 percent on average of all PNY bucks in every state are taken during the rut phases mm. so if that high a percentage is taken during a three-week period why wouldn't you want to focus your attention on setting up on sign that was from the previous rut so postseason scouting your scrapes are still visible you know pre-season pre they're all grassed over and stuff so postseason they're still visible licking branches are visible you can still identify last fall's rubs really easily the runways are still there as soon as the snow melts you can see last fall's runways so uh, and also you know postseason scouting you can tear the property up as much as you can you don't have to worry about spooking deer you don't have to worry about scent control uh, everything will be back to normal by by fall so preseason scouting you know if you got a couple mature bucks on your property 
uh, in a state like Michigan with so much hunting pressure, as soon as there's any preseason scouting, they just turn nocturnal till rut phases. Michigan is such a unique state because we've got, on average, about 320,000 bow hunters. We're the most heavily pressured state in the country, and I've hunted in five other states. There's no, no state remotely close to the hunting pressure that Michigan has, especially in Zone 3. Okay, so John, now we're here at one of your properties that you like to hunt, and tell me a little bit about this spot. Now, as far as picking a location, why'd you pick this spot? And then as you start to prep it, what are some things you're, you're doing right now this time of year? Well, this is a spot I've wanted to prep for a few years. I've got free permission on this. Everything I've done is public land and free knock on doors for permission. Nice. I've never owned or leased anything or paid to hunt. But this location here, it has an apple tree. It has, actually has two apple trees. So, you know, during the rut phases, all, all buck activity revolves around doe activity. So this is going to be places where does are going to be feeding, so it's obviously going to attract bucks. And there are some scrapes here from okay. last year. So that's the main draw of this. Also, this massive security cover right here. Okay. You know, a buck can come out of this, bed in this security cover, and come in and feed or else come in to scent check for does during the rut phases at these two apple trees because these are the only two apple trees for quite a ways around. So these okay. are going to be major destination so you've locations. You've got some nice bedding right here. It's kind of a little swale hole, maybe only, I don't know, three, four, five acres, something like that maybe. But you've got, uh, is this going to be corn out here? Or is that rotate year round? Or this year years? rotates. Last year was hay. The year before that it was standing corn. Okay. Uh, standing corn, when I say corn, I like to differentiate between standing corn and pit corn because a lot of standing corn is security cover whereas pit corn is exposed. Okay. So this this location because it's so close to that field is going to be best hunted during the years that's standing corn okay. and these this is dropping apples because they have the security cover. So we're maybe 20 yards in from the field edge here. We're next mm -hmm. to some cover now. So what did you do to kind of prep this for hunting then next fall? What, what kind of physical stuff are you doing here? One of the most unique things I've found out about mature bucks over the last 20 years, when you're hunting at a destination site like an apple tree or a white oak or a pear tree, something like that, is they like to come into it from the best security cover available. So okay. because there's such a lot of security cover here, a buck is gonna come into this, he's gonna come through this security cover, through this marsh grass, yep. and he's gonna come around here to the back side of this apple tree and he may eat a couple apples, but he's primarily coming here to scent check for does during the rut phases, pre-rut and rut. So because of that, most people, 99% of most people would not rape this tree like I did. Yeah, you really clean the sucker off. Uh, from my tree that I prepped, I want to have a shot to the back side because I have had several bucks that I've killed over the years that come into the back side of the tree and then they turn around and want to exit. Okay. So they don't walk over to the exposed part of the tree like does and subordinate bucks do. They stay tight to that security cover. They may pick up an apple or two and eat it, but then they go right back in the security cover and disappear. Now, this site here in particular, now are you only going to hunt this on certain winds or are you going to do scent control so that you could hunt this you know on I can hunt Tuesday of next week and so I'm going to hunt Tuesday of next week but yeah. this is my spot regardless of wind or would you not hunt it because of a certain, oh, a certain wind? I pay zero attention to wind zero my scent control is as close to perfect as it can be okay uh, for the last 17 years I've been a huge activated carbon advocate which Sound like owns a patent, so I use that. Okay. And I just don't get winded anymore, and I pay zero attention to wind. And for the first 35 years I hunted, I paid 100% attention to wind. Now, so a schmo like me, who doesn't do my scent control the way I should, would you advise somebody like me that it maybe isn't gonna go to the nth degree in scent control, should I only hunt this on certain winds then, or should I? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Because the deer, a mature buck, if you're pursuing mature bucks, he's gonna come in from this direction that's north, so obviously you're only gonna to wanna to hunt this with some sort of a northerly, northeast, north or northwest wind. Okay. So the wind's gonna be blowing out into the open, into the field. And when you're talking a mature buck in Michigan, in your mind, is that a three-year-old or four-year-old? Or, I mean, it's now with a lot of antler point restrictions and volunteer antler point restrictions, there's gonna be a lot of two-year-old deer out there that are pretty nice, racked deer. In your mind, Mature deer in Michigan is what? Uh, mature, to me, a mature deer is three and a half years old and older. Okay. That's that's what I base a mature buck at. And then uh, Michigan's kind of unique because I've killed five and a half year old bucks in Michigan that had 105 inch antlers, and I've shot three year old bucks in Michigan that were mid 150s. Okay. So uh, you know, I never go by antler; I go by age. Okay.
Special thanks to John for all of his insight on deer and deer hunting. Make sure to tune in next week for part two of this series. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out online next time you get a chance. You can do it a few different ways. Our website is michiganoutofdoorstv.com or you can check us out on social media at Michigan Out of Doors TV. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, letting you know where we are and where we're headed next. And speaking of where we're headed next, we've got a lot of fun in store for you here this spring. Well, Jenny, we do have a lot of good stuff coming over the next few weeks, lots of good spring fishing. And even though we're, I'm not really sure if it's winter or spring, I do know this, that next week is the beginning of the turkey season. So we're gonna be out chasing gobblers next week with camera in hands, whether we're in the snow or in the warmth, I don't really know. It's gonna be a lot of fun either way. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises is on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a